All right, welcome to 2.4 pre algebra guys. We're talking about variables and equations, okay? So before we start um, creating some, we need to know what we're actually talking about. Um, so first of all, an equation. What is an equation? Uh, you probably know what it looks like, but what is it technically? Well, it's a mathematical sentence that's formed by placing an equal sign between two expressions, okay? So that's an expression... Uh, and that, uh, that's our equal sign, and um, that's an expression. Okay, so we have an expression and an expression separated by an equal sign. That is an equation. So when you think about equation, think e equal sign. Now, when we uh, solve an equation, we find a solution. Well, what is a solution? Well, a solution to an equation is a number that when you plug it back into the equation in place of the variable, it creates a true statement. Okay, and we're going to get into that in a minute. All right, so first uh, we're actually going to um, turn words into equations. So if I um, gave you the sum of a number and 7 is equal to 10. It's a 10. How do we turn those words into an equation? Well, the sum of a number and 7, so we're talking about addition, and we're adding a number and 7, and it is equal to 10. So there you go. It's as simple as that. So why don't you try this one? Pause the video, see if you can form the proper equation, play it when you're done, see if you got it. All right, the quotient of 4 and a number is 48. Okay, so what do we start with? Well, the quotient of, so we're talking about division, and we'll use a fraction bar, or a division bar, it's fine. Uh, either way, yeah, the quotient of 4 and a number. So what comes first? Well, the 4 comes first, so he's going to go on top, and a number. Well, what number? Well, we don't know, so again, we use a variable. Is means equal, and what is it? It's negative 48. So there you go. The quotient of 4 and a number is negative 48. All right, so let's talk about solutions. Um, so again, we said the solution is when you take a variable and you get uh, a number that equals that variable, such as x equals 4, okay? And that would be a solution. So if I gave you that equation, 2x equals 10, and I said, I want you to tell me, is 4 a solution? Okay, so I give you x equals 4, and I ask, okay, is that a solution? Well, how would you figure that out? Well, you take that 4, and you plug it in there for x, and you'd see if it gets you a true statement, okay? So 2x really means 2 times x, so now we're taking 2 times 4, and we're saying, does that equal 10? I'll we'll put a little question mark. Well, 2 times 4 is 8, and last time I checked, 8 did not equal 10, so we would say that 4 is not a solution. All right, so I want you to pause the video, and I want you to try this one. I want you to figure out if negative 8 is a solution of this equation here, y minus 4 equals negative 12. Pause it, try it, play it, see what you get. Okay, so hopefully you took this negative 8, and you plugged that in there for y. We take uh, what they're proposing the solution might be, and replace uh, it with the variable, or the variable with it, and now if, if I rewrite this, I get negative 8, Minus 4 equals negative 12. And I'll put a question mark there because now I'm testing. So negative 8 minus 4. Well, that's negative 12 equals negative 12, question mark. Well, actually, yeah. Negative 12 does, in fact, equal negative 12. So we would say that negative 8 is a solution. All right, so what if they don't give us a solution? They say, hey, see if this works. And they just give us something like um, that, x minus 9 equals 4. And then they say, solve it. Hmm, what do you do? Well, let's think about it. We're going to start using mental math a little bit. There's a number out there that exists that when you take 9 away from it, you get 4. Okay, so what number minus 9 equals 4? I know, it should be 13. Let's test it. 13 minus 9 equals 4, question mark. Uh, 13 minus 9, yeah, equals 4. 4 does equal 4, so we would say that x equals 
13. Okay, why? Because 13, when, it, when we plugged it in there for x, we replaced x with 13 in that equation, we got a true statement. This produces a true statement. So why don't you pause the video, try this one, play it when you're done, see what you get. Okay, so this says, and I should have said it, you know, it says solve, it's the directions there, solve the equation. So 11 minus p equals 14. 11 minus some number gets us to 14. Well, that's kind of odd because if I had a number line, 11 would be here, 12, 13, 14 would be there. And usually if I'm subtracting, I'm going this way, but if I subtract, I'm going to go here, I need to get here. How do I get to 14? Well, hopefully you figured it out that, well, if you add 3 to 11, that would get you to 14. And we remember that adding is the same as subtracting a negative, or, you know, double negative. So what I know is that if I put in a, so we have 11 minus, and replace P with a negative 3 equals 14. Well, see, 11 minus negative, that minus a negative becomes plus a positive, so now we're taking 11 plus 3 equals 14, and again, question mark, question mark, we're testing. 11 to 3, 14, last time I checked, 14 equals 14. So is our solution 14? No, our solution, it's not x, it's p in this case, p equals negative 3. Why negative 3? Because when we plugged it in, it produced a true statement. All right, so now let's create some equations from word problems because that's really the most important part of this whole thing. So on your way to Florida, you drive with an average speed of 60 miles an hour. And we want to know about how long does it take you to travel 240 miles, okay? Well, I mean, it's kind of easy. We can figure out in our head pretty quickly. But what I want you to realize is how important it is that you can take some words and you can build an equation, okay, out from those words. So what do we know and what do we, don't, what do we not know? Okay, well, we know you drive an average speed of 60 miles an hour. And we know that you're traveling 240 miles. But what we don't know is how long it takes you to travel those uh, 240 miles at 60 miles an hour. So when we don't know something, what do we do? We replace it with a variable, okay? And because we're talking about, uh, about how long does it take you, we're talking about time, so we're going to use t as our variable in this case, okay? But what's our equation? Well, we know that if you take a speed that you're traveling and we multiply it by the time... At, you know, the, the time you're traveling, that's actually going to get you the distance that you've traveled. Okay, this is a form of the um, distance equation, which is distance equals rate times time. And what is rate? Rate is the same thing as speed. Okay, so what's our speed in this case? Well, it's 60 miles per hour. So I'm going to write 60 miles over one hour, because remember, a fraction is a ratio, 60 miles per hour. And we're going to multiply that by, well, the time. How long? Well, how long does it take you to travel 240 miles? Well, we don't know. So it's just going to be X amount of hours. Okay? And that's equal to a distance. Well, what's our distance we're going? We're going to travel 200 and, oops, 240 miles. Okay. So how do we go about solving this? Well, 60 miles per hour times how many hours is going to get you 240 miles? Well, you know what I can do first? Try and simplify things. Um, you know, I'm trying to get something that equals miles. Okay, so on this side of the equation, I got some kind of complex stuff, but it has to equal miles over here too. Miles has to equal miles. I can't have distance or uh, time equaling miles because time and miles aren't the same thing. So if you uh, remember unknown amount of hours or X amount of hours, um, you know, if I give you the number 5, how could you write that as a fraction? Remember, we could do 5 over 1. So if I give you X hours, I can write that as X hours over 1, and I haven't really changed the value. Now, what does that help me do? Well, I can cross-cancel some things. And what can I cross-cancel? Hours. One unit of hours is on bottom of one fraction, and that's being multiplied by a fraction that has hours on top. One on top, one on bottom means cancels. 
So now what I'm really left with is 60 miles, and that's over this remaining one, but I don't have to put it over one, times x nothings because we canceled hours, and technically I could do x over 1, but I don't have to, and that's got to get me 240 miles. M-I-L-E-S in both places. Okay, so 60 miles times what equals 240 miles? Well, now it's a lot simpler, and we just know that 60 times 4 would get you 240. So if I plug in a 4, 60 miles times 4 equals 240 miles. And now that I've plugged the number in, i got to put a little question mark because I'm testing. Well, 60 times 4, 240, and it's 60 miles times 4. Uh, there's no label there, so it just retain or maintains miles, stays miles. 240 miles, does that equal 240 miles? Well, last time I checked, it does. So our solution is 240, right? No. Keep in mind the solution is the number you plugged in for the variable that gave you this true statement. So x equals 4. The question is, for what? Well, if we look back at the original equation, we said 60 miles per hour times x amount of hours equals 240. So x was standing for the amount of hours. So 4 hours. And that's our solution. Alright, so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you liked the video, and I look forward to seeing you all in class.